Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be learning about the very, very basics of scripting, and we're going to be using the obby example that we made last time to introduce the scripts into. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video or it does help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button if you guys are new around here, and you guys want to see some more Roblox development videos, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. Additionally, join the Discord, link down below in the description. You guys can ask questions in there or also help other people. And the last thing is that I have a Patreon. If you guys wish to support me, you guys can go down below in the description and join the Patreon. Anyway, let's get into the video. So loading up the studio once again We're gonna go ahead and select the game that we created last time I'd like to start from the very beginning so I can kind of show you guys the step-by-step -step process of how to work with this stuff And make it as least confusing as possible So we're gonna go ahead and expand the workspace tab now We see that we have our obby jumps right here, which is all of these We're actually gonna expand and improve our organization once again since we're making more We're gonna make another folder and we're gonna say jumps one or you can name this a lot of different things you can name it literally just one or a couple of different things. Anyway, we're going to drag all those into there. And now we're going to make a brand new folder and we're going to call that jumps two. And the reason for that is because that is going to be the second set of jumps, which we're going to create right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate one of these. The reason that I like to duplicate is because this already has all the properties that we want. Really, the only property that matters here mostly is the anchor portion of it. Besides that, it has the color and a couple of other things, which we're most likely going to change anyway. But besides that, we're going to go ahead and grab that and move it over to here. Also, we are going to move this into jumps to folder. And now let's customize this a little bit if we want to. We can make it a little bit longer we can make it a little bit thinner all right i think that looks good enough let's also make the color uh yellow and now let's go ahead and duplicate this now let's move this over and it's already actually moved up for us you know what we're gonna do we're actually gonna connect these so we are gonna make this red and then we are gonna rename this death jump you could rename it death, you can rename it to whatever you want to, but then let's go ahead and clone this again and put this on the other side. Now, okay, that looks good enough to me. As you guys can also see, these are welded together because they are attached. This one actually isn't attached, but if we push it closer, now all of these are attached together. So we're gonna go click on death jump, click the plus icon, and now we're actually gonna insert a script. So let's rename this to kill script. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into all of the concepts of scripting. This tutorial is actually a prerequisite to an entire scripting series that I'm going to make, and you guys should actually be able to see it. A card up at the top right you guys can click on to go check out the scripting series and learn all of the different things about scripting in Roblox, such as variables, if statements, loops, and a whole bunch of different other things as well. This is just going to be making a really small and simple script without explaining too much of it and different programming things so that you can just make a simple kill script. So I'm going to actually show you guys two different ways to make this script. The simple and sloppy way, which is what a lot of inexperienced and brand new people are going to do, and that's how you learn. And then I'll also show you the advanced, more professional way of doing this. Okay, so what we're going to type in is we are going to type in script, which is referring to this file right here. This is script. Now, if you look at the data of the script, you can click on this, look at the properties, look at the data. We can see that the parent is death jump. So this is the parent of this script. Once again, I'm not going to explain too much in this. We'll make an actual tutorial on this, but I'm going to try to go over this step-by-step step what I'm doing and you might be able to grasp all of this stuff without me explaining too in detail anyway let's just keep going with this then dot parent then dot touched which is an event so now basically what this says is this script but it's actually the script's parent we're gonna get this part and when the parent which is the death jump when that part is touched then let's actually do something and then we're gonna connect that to a function now let's go ahead and make this function now inside of the parameters for the function if you aren't familiar with parameters don't worry about that we're gonna name this part hit now as you, as you guys can see right here this is actually red and this means that there's an error right here when i hit enter it'll actually add n now make sure you have everything that i have here exactly how we have it so we have function and then parentheses and inside of these two parentheses we have part hit you can actually name this whatever you want it doesn't matter but we're going to want to name this part hit for this example and then after that you can click enter and it should automatically insert n if it doesn't make sure you do n and and then parentheses. This is how you end this function right here and tell it that this function is ending at this line. Now what we're going to do is we are going to actually get the part hit parent and then we're going to use a function on this called find first child and this is basically going to search through the parent and we're going to look for an object named humanoid. So part hit is actually the part of your character which touches the death jump part and then the parent of the part that hits it like let's say your foot hits it. 
The parent of that is going to be your player. And then it's going to search through your player to find the humanoid. Now we're actually going to make this into a variable. So we're going to do local humanoid equals. And there we go. So now what this is going to do is it's going to set humanoid to your humanoid. And then we're going to click enter. And then we're going to say if humanoid which this basically means if humanoid actually exists. If it is a humanoid, then we're going to do something. So we're going to take the humanoid and then we're going to set its health to zero. Okay, so this might be really confusing for you if you have no scripting knowledge. I do apologize for that. I am trying to explain it a little bit without getting into too much detail and confusing you a ton. Anyway, let's go back over to here and let's actually move this spawn point like right here so we can easily test it. And now let's go ahead and play our game. Okay, so when we load in, let's go ahead and go to this yellow block and that's our death block right here. So let's step on it and okay, we just died. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Okay, we're still playing the game. Now let's look at kill script. Now let's also go into our explorer, open up work workspace and we can actually see our character in here my name's monster m underscore n z t e r so we're going to go ahead and expand that and inside of this is a bunch of different things this is actually all different parts of our player and we can also see humanoid right here as well which has a bunch of different things inside of it now let's also go ahead and look inside of here and we can actually see a few different things so we see head and we can see how it has properties just like a part we can actually change the color to anything we want if we want to we actually set our head color to really red okay let's go back to the script now so what the script is looking for is think about this okay script.parent the parent of this is actually let's expand all this to so make sure you expand obby jumps jump to death jump so that you can see your kill script so script.parent the parent of this script is death jump you can see the parent by looking in the data category and it's named parent you can literally see that very easily. Also, for example, the parent of the death jump is the jumps to folder. Once you understand what parent is, it's really easy to understand it without having to actually look at the data yourself. So script.parent will find and locate the death jump. Now, what the touch part is, is it's actually an event. We're saying when the script's parent, which is the death jump, is touched, we're gonna connect it to a function. And with this function, we're actually gonna feed in data from this event, and we're gonna feed in what part touched the death jump so of course once again when we look at the character your character is made up of a bunch of different parts if we look inside the studio we can actually see all of the different parts that our character is made up of now most likely when we actually touch this block it's going to be touched by a foot so going back to the script we're saying part hit what part actually hit this and then the parent so let's just say that the right foot hit it well what is the parent the parent is actually the player the monster the model this is actually a model but we'll just call it the player for now in simplicity terms so this is the parent and then inside the parent we're going to look at the parent sort of just like how we did for the script script dot parent part hit dot parent and then we're going to look for the child inside of here all of these are children so right lower leg the parent of right lower leg is monster monster children are all of these things inside of here and we're going to find the first one we're going to find the first one of these things right here which is named humanoid so we're going to find this and then if humanoid is found what we're going to do is we're going to set its health property to zero so if we look at humanoid remember we go over to properties we can actually look at the game and we can see the health and we see the health is 100 so what we're doing with this script is we're actually setting the health to zero which kills our player and makes them respawn so let's say for instance that we want to actually set the health to 50. now if we walk over top of this it's going to kill us again because you should not be editing scripts while you're playing the game so let's make sure that we end the game we go to kill script and it should still be set to 50. so let's go ahead and play it once again now let's go ahead and walk over top of this and as you can see our health is is just set to 50. Anytime our health gets above 50, you can't really tell the bar is increasing very slightly, but we step on it again and the bar resets to 50. Okay, let's stop the game again. Let's go back to our kill script. So let's now actually edit the property of the death jump. So what we're going to do is we're going to do script.parent so that we can get the death jump part right here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at all of the properties. So we have brick color. So let's go ahead and say brick color and it automatically comes up for us equals. Now this is also going to be a little bit a confusing part because you might be thinking well do we just type in red no there are a couple of different kind of confusing things with how this works and kind of how to color stuff what this accepts is it actually accepts brick color so then you do brick color dot whatever color you want to do so let's say oh we could even do random and it should change it to something random okay so now we have this 
So when we step on this, our health is going to go to 50 and the brick color is going to change to a random color. So let's go ahead, start our game and see what happens. Okay, so we go over to here, we step on this and wow, look, the, the color just constantly changes. So anytime we move on this, because our character is touching this, the color is just rapidly changing. How cool. So now you might be thinking, okay, well, I want to change the player's speed, but how do I actually do that? Well, what I would recommend that you guys do is start the game, look at the workplace, go to your player click on humanoid and then you can see all of the properties that you can actually modify so let's say for instance we do want to modify the speed it's actually called walk speed and it accepts a number so inside of here we would do humanoid dot speed equals our speed currently is 32 let's say we actually want our speed to be 50 as well now remember you should always stop the script before editing it but that's okay so let's restart the script now once we go ahead and go on to here our speed oh i actually made a mistake and uh, such an obvious mistake i was just telling you guys how to figure this out so you go to monster and what our mistake is is in here it says speed is not a valid member of humanoid so what that means is that the speed property does not exist within humanoid it's actually called walk speed which we literally just went over so make sure you type in walk speed restart your game and now, once we touch this, our walk speed increases by a lot. Okay, so remember, I said that there is a sloppy way to make this, which is what we did, and I said that I would also show you the nice way to make this. So let's go ahead and make the nice way. So what we are going to do is we are going to say local. We're going to create a variable, and we're going to name it death jump. And we're going to equal that to script.parent. So now we have the death jump object. What we're going to do then is create a function, local function, kill player, and we are going to accept the part hit as the parameter. So exactly what we already did right down here. And then now what we need to do is let's go ahead and actually erase this. Let's do death jump dot. And then if we scroll through this a little bit, we'll actually be able to see all the properties and eventually we'll see some events. So these are a bunch of different events that will fire when something happens. You most likely don't know what child added, child removed, or any of these other things mean, but touched is very very obvious we're, we want to do something when it's touched so we're going to do dot touched and then we are going to connect that to a function and the function that we want to connect it to is kill player now we don't actually have to put anything here just leave it how it is so then inside of this this is where we're going to make the function what we did previously so we're going to want to say local humanoid equals the part hit dot parent fine first child humanoid okay so now we got that and then we're just basically doing the exact same thing again so if humanoid then we're going to set humanoid dot health to zero we can also set humanoid dot walk speed to one to make them really slow and also we want to change the death jump color so death jump brick color equals brick color dot random once again Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and start this. So once we get into the game, we go right here and it works exactly as we wanted it to. So this is a little bit of a nicer way to do it. The reason for that is because we're declaring variables and we're not doing script.parent a bunch of different times. We're actually using death jump two times rather than doing script.parent, script.parent. So now if we actually wanted to change this in the future, we only have to change the variable or what the variable is getting rather than changing script.parent to something else two times. It might be a little bit hard to explain because you don't know too much about coding yet but this is the neatest way to do it additionally making your functions nice as well rather than having the functions inside of here and yeah that's exactly how we did it anyways ladies and gentlemen we're gonna end it here hopefully this did help you guys out and you guys should now know the very very basics of scripting if this video did help you guys out as always make sure you smash the like button if you guys are new around here and you guys want to see some more roblox development videos make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on additionally join the discord link down below in the description if you guys have questions want to ask questions or you want to help other people you can also leave a comment down below providing me feedback or asking questions and i can answer them as well and the last thing is i have a patreon if you guys would like to support me link down below in the description go check out the patreon and maybe join anyway i hope that you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next episode